Welcome to another episode of the Meal Prep Monday podcast. I'm your host and founder of Prep Dish, Allison Schaff. Today we are wrapping up our series on protein. If you have not listened to the previous episodes, I have two interviews that go into the importance of protein in your diet. And then last week I did options for getting 30 grams of protein in at breakfast and really tasty, delicious ideas there. And then today I'm going to wrap up with some ideas on getting in enough protein at lunch. Before diving in, a reminder that for the month of January, we will be including protein boost menus in all of our subscriptions. So if you're already a Prep Dish subscriber, you should be receiving those in your Friday emails. And if you have not subscribed and would want to try out these new protein boost menus, head to prepdish.com slash MPM, short for Meal Prep Monday, and you can get a two-week free subscription. January is a great month to get that subscription because you get these free bonus menus. So our menus go out on Friday. And depending on when you're listening to this, I am going to have those menus posted in the Friday, February 2nd newsletter as well as when you sign up. So if I know this is the last week of January, and if you're listening to this a little later in the week, if it is before February 2nd or early in the morning on February 2nd, there is still time to get your hands on those menus. So again, go to prepdish.com slash MPM. And I've been making those meal plans here in my household. And I love that they are really quick and easy (laughs) recipes. And I don't have to think about the numbers. I know that it's already been calculated and I'm getting 30 grams of protein at each meal. So for today's episode, I'm not going to go into the why of, you know, 30 grams and getting more protein. You could go back and listen to the past episodes I did on this. And I also can link again the two books that I read kind of preparing for this month here at Prep Dish, where we are focusing on protein. It's something that I spent the last several months of 2023 preparing for. Dr. Gabrielle Lyon has a great new book out, and then Peter Attia as well. And both of them go into more of the why and the importance of getting enough protein. But today I'm going to focus more on the how. I say at Prep Dish, that's really our goal is, you know, my background as a dietitian. I don't focus though so much on the why, but like, how do you implement that? Like you're getting these nutrition recommendations, but how does that look in your diet and how can I make that taste healthy and be something you look forward to. So for the lunch items, it's going to be a little bit different than breakfast. Breakfast was a little more specific on recipes. And for lunch, I guess it's hard for me to do that just because that's not how I really look at lunch. Lunch in my house tends to be more, I guess, thrown together. You know, it's just, it's leftovers. And so I think for lunch, while you are welcome to do recipes, what I thought would be most helpful today is just go over a list of different ideas of like, hey, here's a base. And if you have this, you can mix and match however you want. But this is just like a good base for making sure you're getting enough protein at lunchtime. And then you can figure out the sides. So the other note I will say is my number one way of having protein at lunchtime is by having that protein made the night before. So whatever I have for dinner the night before, I try and increase the amount that I make. If I'm making the super fast meal plans, I just double (laughs) what's called for and then have the leftovers for lunch the next day. If the kids are home, then often I will open in, you know, a pack of of ground meat or whatever it is and, and make something more from scratch because I have more mouths to feed. But if it's just me or me and my husband, it's usually just setting aside some protein from the night before. So some examples of what that looks like. So four ounces of chicken is 31 grams. So you don't have to worry about the sides at all. If you're eating four ounces of leftover chicken, you could put that on a salad, make it into a rice bowl serve it with some vegetables, but just that chicken alone is gonna get you to 31 grams. The four ounces of salmon will get you to 23 grams, but I like to pair that with quinoa. So a cup of quinoa is eight grams. And I don't always eat a cup of quinoa, so it might be like four ounces of salmon and maybe three-fourths cup quinoa, and then some vegetables will add to the protein amount. And then another one that if you're looking for kind of a quicker and vegetarian option is a baked potato with cottage cheese. So if you listen to last week's episode on breakfast ideas, cottage cheese is a really good standby for getting enough protein. One cup 
is 25 grams. So a baked potato with a cup of cottage cheese is going to get you there. Another really great one to have on hand and is a good one to have in your pantry. This is something I always keep in my pantry. And then if I do have a day where there aren't leftovers, I can pull out a can of tuna. The whole can is 42 grams. So I typically don't eat quite a full can, but close. Sometimes I give the, the, the extra to my cats, but I will mix that up with some mayo, put it on either a salad or even in a wrap. I keep those cassava. Siete makes some really good cassava tortillas and I will keep those in the freezer so I can kind of do that maybe with some like a salad or whatever on the side. But that can of tuna is nice to have on hand to make sure I can get to that 30 grams really easily. And then let's see pork chop. So a four ounce pork chop or like even pork tenderloin is 27 grams. So again, pair it with veggies of choice and you will get there. And then the other one I wanted to include was shredded meat. Sometimes what I will do at the beginning of the week is make some sort of like big roast or carnitas or something like that, that shredded meat and about three fourths cup is going to get you to 24 grams. So with this shredded meat idea, I think I've gone over this in past episodes on like uh, lunch ideas or prep ahead lunch is doing like a big batch of shredded either pork or like I said, carnitas doing that. And then throughout the week, kind of changing it up. So maybe one day I'll do like a rice bowl. One day I will do it on top of a salad, but like kind of a heartier salad with maybe some like corn and beans and stuff mixed in one day serving it in tortillas. Um, But really that three fourths cup, which to me is a pretty standard serving size. If you do that, plus kind of the add ons, you're going to get to that 30 grams. So my idea with giving these out is not that you're going to sit there and measure things out or weigh things out. But I think it's good to kind of have an idea of what can get you there if protein is something you feel like you need to be focusing on. But then that way you can kind of just naturally get there with eyeballing it, not really having to think too hard, but also just kind of know that you are able to get there. And it is something, you know, that I spent some time focusing on. I'm doing weight training and work with a coach. And if I ever mention that, oh gosh, like I'm kind of feeling sore or I'm tired or, you know, like just not able to get the max weights that she's wanting me to get to or complaining about muscle soreness or not being able to hit those weights. The first thing she always tells me is like, are you sure you're eating enough? And it's really challenged me to question if I do (laughs) always eat enough, especially when I'm on days where I'm lifting. And, you know, I think with having kids, it's really easy to get all caught up in busy in the day and not focus on really making sure I'm always eating enough calories, um, which is kind of counterintuitive to what we've been taught. So it is something that I try and really reflect on. If I do ever notice that I'm maybe not feeling as strong in my workouts that maybe it's actually that I need to just be eating a little (laughs) bit more. So, um, something that you might want to think about as well, as you start reflecting more on your protein intake. So I hope this is helpful. I hope it gives you some ideas on how you can kind of tweak things at home to have some lunches that can get you to that 30 gram mark really easily and still have lunches that you enjoy eating and look forward to. And again, if you are looking for a done for you meal plan that has already calculated all of the meals and breakfast options to make sure that you're getting to your 30 grams. I even have listed on the recipe, like the serving size and the grams of protein. So you don't have to do any calculations. Just head to prepdish.com slash MPM, and you can get your hands on those protein boost menus. If you're listening to this and it's past February 2nd, 2024, you still might want to check in. We haven't decided for sure what we are going to do with those meal plans. But my guess is at some point they will live on the site. We do have at prepdish.com slash shop. We list out a lot of our, we have kind of some individual products. So we have like a whole 30 compliant, like a month of whole 30 compliant meal plans. Um, we have autoimmune protocol meal plans, alkaline diet meal plans. I don't think there's any others, you know, like some holiday cooking guides and, and different things like that. So if you're ever wanting to try any of our recipes and menus, but not wanting the weekly subscription, go to prepdish.com slash shop. And I'll link that in the show notes, but you might want to just check out what we have there. We have a lot of different options for helping you get meals on the table. 
the entertainment bundle, I don't think I talk about that much here on the podcast, but that's one that I personally go back to a lot just for menus when I'm entertaining or doing special, whether it's Easter menu or some sort of holiday or birthday or whatever. Like I know a lot of those recipes and menus are tried and true. So a great resource if you're just looking for help with more special occasions. So that is there. And that is all I have today for the episode that wraps up our month of protein. I hope you've enjoyed listening to this. As always, if you are a longtime listener, I would so appreciate your ratings and reviews or sharing this episode with someone that might benefit. It just really helps get the word out about our podcast and the work we do here at Prep Dish. And I just really appreciate that. You know, we really over the years are able to maintain what we do and grow because of all of you and you sharing what we do here at Prep Dish. So I truly appreciate that. I will be back again next Monday with another episode. 